I remember the um, time that I saw Elvis when he was doing his reunion special, Elvis Presley. He was back from the army. He was slim. He was tan. He was wearing that black leather suit. He was so cool. And I was shocked the other day. My mom told me she didn't think Elvis was sexy. My mom, my mom, with all due you know, respect to my dad, come, come on. And Elvis sang. Um, he did acoustic numbers with, I think, Carl Perkins was there and uh, Chris Christopherson. Is, I'm doing this by memory. And then he did some gospel stuff. Oh, gosh, it was magic. And he was, he was tough Elvis. He was active Elvis. And then, of course, we all know about the fat Elvis stage. And it was so very sad to understand this from the point of view of the new movie where Tom Hanks uh, plays the Colonel, Colonel Parker, who is never a colonel, by the way. And I know that's, a, that's an amorphism that people use in the South, but not even that. They couldn't figure out who he was. Like, they couldn't really figure out who he was, which is why Elvis could never leave the country. Very complicated story. But you see this Elvis who's fat on pills and food and trying to medicate his way into being okay and trying to eat his way into being okay. And of course, it destroyed him and it killed him. And that fat Elvis, man, trying to do the karate kicks, that stuff's gone, sweating, and the towels are all over the place, and the jumpsuits, and it's horribly sad. It's horribly sad. I'm not sad that the Obamatons are at their fat Elvis stage, man. It is gone. I mean, they could leave the country. They've got all the money, but it is gone. Praise God it's gone. They've entered into the done jump the sharkville, and let's talk about this because it is glorious really is it's a glorious thing you can do for this holiday which is to try these holidays thanksgiving and christmas whatever you celebrate i hope it's christmas jesus is king and it's bone frog cellars you probably heard about bone frog coffee if you watch any of my programming listen to my radio shows or my podcast at all you've heard me talk about this you know i'm close friends with the founder and ceo of bone frog cellars and bone frog coffee tim Cruikshank who's a retired Navy SEAL, did three deployments on our behalf. He went into the wine business the same way he went into the coffee business, which was admitting he doesn't know anything about wine. He's a SEAL. So he met with people who know wines, who run wineries. He taught himself the business. He got mentors. Then he got the wine he loved. It's bone frog cellars. There is a Cabernet and there's a Merlot. Do two things really well and keep it very, very simple, right? My friends who are wine connoisseurs came to my house and nervously tasted this because they know Tim's a seal and if they don't like the wine, he'll come on a night op and kill him. No, <laughs> no, he, no, he really, no, no, you keep that in there. My producer's over there is going to take that out. No, leave that in. That was a joke. No, Tim is not going to kill you. He's going to make you do something from buds. It's okay. Not everyone likes the wine. But give it a try because my friends who are connoisseurs, they loved it. My friends who are casual consumers of wine, they loved it. My daughter, who's brand new to wine, she really thought it was tasty. Go to bonefrogcellars.com. And if you don't know the Bonefrog label, know that when it arrives, the wine will say on it, God, country, team. That's how Tim lives. It'll have the outline of a fallen seal on that. That's the insignia of a fallen Navy seal. And know when you're enjoying this wine with your friends, that 10% of proceeds will go to the Navy SEAL Foundation to help the families of fallen Navy SEALs. Bonefrogsellers.com slash Todd. Michelle Obama giving us some hope prior to the election that was so close. <laughs> Yet for, for so much of this election cycle, we have been inundated with voices and forces that tell us another story about who we are. The folks telling us that things may not be as they appear. Can we pause for a second and just point out that she's been trained to speak by the same people who trained her husband to speak. Same cadence. It's probably the same writer, honestly, if you just listen to this. And among you, who thinks that Michelle Obama says folks when she's sitting around with her friends uh, in Hawaii and traveling to France and the south of France and in the Hollywood business? You think they say folks? No, because they think that's how we speak. We walk around saying, yeah, folks say. That we should be suspicious of our neighbors. That military service and sacrifice is for suckers. That woman is famous for saying all this for a flag and would put not put her hand over her heart for the Pledge of Allegiance. 
And now she's willing to read these words in the same cadence that her husband has been taught to read these words. Back to her words. That there's an enemy from within. There's an enemy from within, says a woman whose husband, from the Rose Garden, brought doctors in for a meeting. They didn't know they were there to be used as a photo prop. They were brought out into the Rose Garden, given white lab coats, sat down while Obama came out to give a speech wherein he announced that doctors and dentists were removing body parts just for the money. But yeah, there's no enemy from within. Her husband, a trained community organizer, agitator, destroyer, Saul Alinsky trained, but there's no enemy from within, ever. Got it, Michelle. See, we've had this noise buzzing in our ears for over a decade now. But at least for me, y'all, it's still not normal. It is still unsettling every time I hear someone say that the hope and pride that I feel for the country I love is misplaced. All this for just a flag. Michelle Obama, I'm finally proud of my country because they elected my husband. Oh, praise God, she's in her fat Elvis stage. That, that down is up and right is wrong? My God, it's bewildering. Even the facial expression, the lip thing, that was a Barack Obama thing. They're twins. It is, it is dangerous. It is shameful. Now, of course, we've been battling for the soul of our democracy for a very long time. The soul of our democracy. We don't have a democracy. We have a Republican. How dare you speak of a soul when during your convention you tried to ban the word of God from it, the name of God. Three separate votes. Praise God that this is just didn't land. They didn't convince anybody. They didn't cause anybody to vote. They didn't bring anything to the table. They brought lectures that have become boring and sad. It's not quite fat, Elvis, because she looks... Well, not fat, neither does Barack, but it's gone. And they continue to baffle themselves or pretend to be baffled about how do we get to this divisive point? Indeed, how did we? Maybe we could look at some people who follow your prescription, the Alinsky prescription. Pick a target, isolate it, cut it off from its support base. Don't pick organizations because they can't hurt. Pick people. Demonize the people. Did it work? Let's see from some Democrats if it worked. Oh, I got too political? My bad. I just don't know if I'll be able to own a credit card without my husband's permission in seven days. Oh, did I get too political? My bad. I just don't know if I want to get rid of overtime in seven days. Oh, I've gotten too political? My bad. I just want to make sure I have access to birth control in seven days. Oh, I got too political? My bad. I guess I don't know if I'm going to be a U.S. citizen in seven days. Oh, I got too political? My bad. I'm just worried I won't be able to love who I love in seven days. Oh, did I get political? My bad. I just don't want my mother to be denied her health care because she has a pre-existing condition. Oh, I'm being too political? My bad. I'm just fighting for the future of my daughter. Oh, I got too political? My bad. It's just that I don't know if my family in Western North Carolina will be warned of the hurricane coming in seven days when the National Weather Service is gone. Oh, I got too political? My bad. I don't want them to start rounding up immigrants to deport in seven days. Of all the above, which one was a possibility? No, don't say immigrants. That would be illegals, criminal illegals, people who have committed crimes since they snuck into the country. None of the other things were a possibility. But these people said there's an enemy from within. It's Donald Trump. And Michelle Obama stood there baffled or pretending to be baffled as she read her script in the same way that Barack Obama was taught to read a script. Oh, Lord. Thank you for stripping away whatever spellbinding abilities had once rained down upon Barack and Michelle Obama.